Okay, on uh, this video, we're going to make a scatter graph, line of best fit, filter the data, and get more lines of best fit. So uh, this data is on uh, baseball scores and uh, uh, runs, hits, and so on for a ton of players from 1960 through 19, uh, uh, well, actually through the 2000s. So click anywhere in your data and then do insert table. And uh, this is required for you to be able to filter it well. We'll need to do that. And so here, this is uh, tells you the rows that we're dealing with, uh, A1 through A4,537. So this is a big table, and we're going to filter it too. And then your table has headers. Make sure that's checked. Say OK. And now it makes your data uh, table into uh, uh, it makes your data into a table. So now at this point, we need to choose the columns that we're going to deal with. So uh, what I'm going to deal with is let's I'm going to do uh, let's say at bats so I'm going to choose column J and let's say I'm going to do home runs so I'm going to do uh, well I'll tell you what I'll do runs so J and K so I'll do control click and that's important control click allows you to choose your second column even if they're separated I'll do that again so let's say we're doing at bats and home runs I would click column J then I would do control click, control left mouse click on column M. Okay, so you have to choose your two columns that you're dealing with. I've done this a lot of times and I keep forgetting to do that. So choose column J and I'm going to choose my second one. I'm going to do runs here, which is control click column K. And now I'm going to get my scatter graph and all that stuff. So I'm going to do insert, come over here where it says insert scatter. Click that and choose the top one that looks like a bunch of dots. Top one here, top left, and click that and you get your scatter graph. Okay, now I want to get my lines of best fit. So click the plus sign next to the graph and go down and you can actually click clear over on the arrow and go down to more options. We actually have to go down to more options. Now, make sure that linear is chose because we want the line of best fit. You can get other types if you want for yourself for something like if you want to get an exponential to maybe growth this uh, uh, model the spread of a virus or whatever. They got logarithmic polynomial power moving average, but we just want linear. Now you also need to display your equation and your R squared value on the chart. And when you do that, it's really hard to see them because they're be, they're on top of all these dots so it's tough to see there's also a line in there too that we can't even see so we'll have to adjust that okay so now after you do that we might need to adjust some things on this chart so let's see what all we need to adjust these are your three areas that we can get into right now we're on on this area which is all these trend line options well like we said we can't even see the trend line so we need to forecast forward and backwards just to see this line stick out some so I'm going to uh, forecast forward by a hundred and I'm going to forecast backwards by a hundred and I'm just picking a hundred at random it's because I'm looking at the X values and I see that they go up by hundreds so I'm going to go out you know extra hundred so I can see that line okay other things we need to do are if I click over here let's see if we can find the area um, and this takes a little bit to, to find this is I think we need to click back off of this area and click back on the chart again and yeah just click click back on the chart and now you'll see this area with size and properties and the way you do that is click off here in the top area so that the whole chart is selected and what I'm going to do here is make sure that the chart doesn't disappear. Sometimes when you're filtering data, it you lose so many cells that or rows that if we would lose these rows in filtering, you you will won't see your chart anymore. So by doing what I'm going to do now, the the chart will stay in position. So we selected the chart. See right here, selected the chart. Then over here where it says size and properties, click that. And this properties thing is usually hid like that, just says properties. So click that to open it and then choose this one. Don't move or size with cells. Now what that does is it it keeps your chart in place. Now another option is to just uh, create a new sheet by clicking the plus sign and copy your chart over. So if you if you have trouble with it with uh, keeping your data 
uh, your table and uh, chart solid like that and not moving, you can control C, copy the chart and just put it on a new sheet like this. Control V. Here, I'll do it. So control V, it's on a new uh, place. But this is fine. It, either way is fine. But you just don't want to lose it when you filter it. So now I can't hardly read this line of best fit. So I'm going to click on it and you'll eventually see that type of thing on, on it. So you click and move that. Click and drag that out of the way. If you still have a hard time seeing it or if you want to make that font bigger, you can highlight it and uh, change the font size to a larger size. You can even bold it, whatever you like. So now, what does this uh, line of best fit mean? Well, one of the important things is this slope. Now, I'm going to round this slope to the nearest hundredth. So 0.189 raised to the near, uh, rounded to the nearest hundredth is 0 0.19. 0 0.19 is the same as 19 one hundredths. And slope is rise over run. So that means this graph is going up 19 for every run of 100. Okay, again, 0.189, rounding to the nearest 100 is 0 0.19. 0 0.19 is 19 hundredths. 19 hundredths, rise over run is slope, means rise 19, run 100. So in other words, we're going up 19 runs for every 100 at bats because the x-axis was at bats. See, your first one you choose is your x-axis, which is at bats. And your second column that you choose is your y-axis, which is runs. So this means 19 additional runs for every 100 at-bats. Now what we're going to do is filter the data. So I will warn you now that when you filter the data, your equation often does not update. So you have to do get the equation each time you filter. So let's go ahead and do this. So now instead of getting... Uh, the line of best fit for all the data, I'm going to get the line of best fit for, let's just do the American League. So I'm going to go where I can filter it right here on League and choose, do select all and just choose American. And watch to see if these numbers change. They probably won't. So say OK. And you see that this did not update. So we have to do to get the line again. So to do that, I'll just go ahead and delete that. And we can even delete the line. And sometimes you don't have to do this if there's not a whole bunch of data points. But uh, we do when there's this many data points. So let's go ahead and do the line again. So we click on the plus sign. Go down to the trend line and click on the arrow. And we'll do more options. And uh, let's go ahead and go to the line area here, which is uh, this area right here, trend line options. Make sure it says linear and display the equation in the R squared and you can do the 100 forward and backwards again uh, if you know to see the line better. There's a lot of things you can do to to this line to make it uh, more visible if you want but now let's move this over here and you can see the equation did change this is 0.1884 so this is very similar to what was already up there but it's slightly different your coefficient determination this time is 0.4058 which means 40 percent of the variability in your runs is uh, determined by your at bats and you can continue on with with any filtering that you want if we want to filter not just by by lig but let's keep it filtered by lig, but also filter it by year. So now if I filter it by year, and I'll tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and make this font a little bit bigger so that you can see it on this video. So let's make this a little bit bigger so you can see it real well. So now what I'm going to do is uh, filter it again by year. So now I'm going to choose just particular years. So I'm going to do select all, and I'm going to just choose the 1960s. So I'm going to choose from 1960 up through 1969 and say OK. And I believe it will update this time. Let's see. No, it did not update. I don't trust this value. So again, we'll have to uh, go back to the... Uh, so I click on the line and I'm going to take this off. And uh, then I'm going to... And I'm even going to, uh, uh, now I'm going to put the equation back on. 
So I had to take it off and put it back on. And now this is the equation. So the line of best fit, here it is, and the equation is now correct. The slope is 0.16, and that means in the 1960s, for the American League, for every 100 at-bats, your runs were going up by about 16 right there. And you can see that your coefficient determination is a little bit lower. So at uh, your at-bats did not affect your runs as much as they did when we were looking at all the years. But that's the type of thing uh, to do with this uh, problem. There's a lot of options you can do if you have to do this in another class to make your graph uh, prettier or whatever. For example, you can go to the... Uh, to the uh, line and and change the colors and so on so uh, I'll see what uh, options we might have here like for example uh, in this area where it says uh, fill and line you can uh, make it a solid line let's go down here where it says dash type and make it a solid line you can change the color of the line to anything that you like you can put arrowheads on it if you like like this and like uh, this so we got the line of best fit and that sort of thing. So um, uh, we can do one more if you like. So let's uh, let's let's take off the American leg, and we'll just keep the 1960s. So I uh, will take off this sorting, say OK, and it did update it this time. And let's take off the 1960s, and maybe uh, this time. See, I selected all. And this time, let's just do these few years in the 2000s that we have. So this is for both legs in the 2000s. Let's see what the situation is. So you can see it's a steeper slope. It's about 20.21 rounded to the nearest hundredth. So in the later decades, your uh, runs uh, went up 21 for, for every 100 at bats. So more runs in the 2000s compared to the 1960s. Those type of things you can get. So I'll stop this uh, right here, and I think you should be able to uh, do your problem seeing this video.